work. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Beamer Barn. My name is Chris and I bought an E46 wagon recently that only came with one key. And the problem is that this key, although it works and it starts the car fine and it opens and closes the door fine, uh, it doesn't remote unlock or lock the car. The trunk button doesn't work. And the thing about these BMW keys, at least the one that I have, they are not serviceable in terms of the battery inside. Now there are some videos online showing how you can replace the battery. It involves cutting through and scoring the plastic housing for the key and then you have to desolder some components to get the battery off, but then you're left with a key that's basically destroyed and you're probably going to have to tape it up, glue it together, or you could buy a key housing replacement, which is an option too. But the problem then is that, again, you have to solder the board on the key and things can get a little messy and it's pretty time consuming. So what I decided to do was I found a full replacement key with chip on Amazon and I bought it and I also picked up a programmer which is gonna let me program the key so that it'll match the old one the current one that I have and it'll allow me to have two keys and this one is actually gonna work because the battery in it isn't dead now the batteries don't typically die if you're treating the key correctly uh, there is a charger, an inductor coil that's in the barrel of the car's ignition and it actually charges the key while you're driving. The problem is when you have multiple keys and you leave one aside and you don't drive with that one key, then it never gets charged and when the battery gets fully fully depleted of its energy, there's no way to bring a dead battery cell back to life. And so at the end of the day, you're probably better off just getting a replacement key and you could call your local locksmith. They might be able to have something available for you, but you're at their mercy in terms of pricing when it comes to how much they want to charge you for that key. So I'm going to put a link in the description to the Amazon products that I'm using today. I've got a BMW key replacement as well as the AK90 key programmer. And this is all that we're going to need in order to program the key to my E46. So these keys come blank and you're gonna have to call around and find an automotive locksmith near you who's gonna be able to cut this reverse barrel style key. I believe that's the name for it. There might be some other names, but basically it's this funny looking key that BMW has been using for a few generations now. So let's go ahead and load up the AK90 programmer software and see if we can clone my key. Now you're gonna need a few things in order to clone or program a new battery for your car. The first thing that you're gonna have to have is a Windows laptop because the AK90 software is only gonna work with a Windows machine. So something with a USB port and an internet connection, that's really all that you need. Now, the AK90 comes with software on a CD, but in case you can't load that software onto your laptop, like mine doesn't have a CD or a DVD drive, then you can just go ahead and search on the internet. I'll put a link down below to where you can download the AK90 software completely free, and you don't have to have any account or anything funny in order to use it and it's really easy to install as well. So here is the AK90. This is gonna be your main tool. This is what programs the key. You can see that there's a little slot in there so you can stick the key in there. And then here are the cables that came with it. Now on my EWS module, we're gonna be using this chip adapter here. And then this is the USB cable, which is gonna connect from the computer to the AK90. So speaking of chip adapters, we're gonna have to remove our EWS module from the car. This is 100% necessary because you're gonna have to read the information from the module in order to program your new key. So mine was located underneath the dashboard. That's a standard location for the E46s. It's held in by a couple of 10 millimeter nuts. Once you remove it, you're gonna have access to it. And then later we're gonna be pulling the cover off of it to get access to the chip board. Now here is my original key, or at least the one that came with the car. I'm not sure if it's original or not, but it does have this BMW sticker inside there, so at least someone went and did that. But again, the problem is that this thing, it doesn't 
communicate with the remote locking system and it won't because the battery is completely dead and once this thing is completely dead there's really no way of recovering it you could try ch charging it using a wireless charging pad or like a toothbrush charger but that's not going to be a guaranteed fix to getting this thing charged and working again so here is our brand new key that we got from amazon like i said i'll put a link to it in the description below it came in this little package it was about twenty dollars and when I bought this key, I made sure to get the one that had the transponder and the chip already inside it. So this is not like a shell. Some keys that you see for sale, they are gonna be just shells. They don't come with the transponder or they don't come with the remote. So you might have to transfer over some things from your key, but I wanted to have a completely new key so that we would have a good backup and we'd have a good daily driver key. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna program this thing today. And as you can see, we have already had it cut. So you can save a couple bucks by just having this laser cut and then doing the programming yourself. Or if you want to save the time, call up your local automotive locksmith and they should be able to do this whole process for you from start to finish. But something like that could cost $100 to $200, whereas just cutting this key here could cost around $50 to $100. So cutting the key yourself, $50 to $100, the key, 20 bucks, and this kit right here, I think about 40 bucks for the AK-90. So for about the same price, you're investing into the tool and you'll be able to do this procedure yourself in the future. Now as a proof of concept, I'll just show you that since this key is cut, it does open and close the doors fine. But once we get in the car, since it's not programmed, it should not be able to start the car. So we can turn the ignition but it's not gonna let us start the car because of course there's no key programming or at least this car probably thinks that this is the wrong key for it. So we need to program it. So we're gonna start off by downloading the software first and like I said, I'll throw a link to this in the description down below but it's really easy to install. You're gonna want to extract the folder first before trying to run anything. So we're gonna extract it with Windows File Explorer and then navigate to the new folder and we're gonna run the setup program. So setup.exe is what you're gonna look for. Go ahead, click it and run it. And then you're just gonna follow a few steps on the screen. Now it is gonna ask you for a name, company, and serial number. None of this is important. You can put whatever jibber jabber in these boxes that you want. It's not gonna keep you from downloading or using the software. So just keep that in mind. But we're gonna download it and keep in mind where you're downloading it to so that later you can navigate there to that folder and run the software. And something else to keep in mind as well is that you should download the USB drivers in case it doesn't work the first time using your programmer. These drivers are sometimes downloaded automatically by Windows, but you might have to search for them or I'll try to link them in the description below. So that way you guys don't have any issues with the drivers. So we're going to start by testing the AK90 programmer right here. I'm putting my key in, but the first button you're going to want to press is connect. So the connect button is going to establish a connection between the hardware and the software. And then you can go ahead and put any key in and then read the key using the test key function. So this is my key here. It read successfully. And now we're going to go ahead and put my new key in the slot and see if it reads as anything. And of course, when we go to try to read it, it gives us an error because this key is 100% blank. So since we've tested our AK90 programmer and we made sure that it can read a key successfully, we're going to move on to removing the board from the EWS module. Now there are these four clips on the black connector. These all have to be squeezed down and then you'll be able to push the board through the housing, pull it out the other side, and you'll have direct access to the chip which holds the security information for your key. So the chip on my board here is the OD46J chip. So that's what we're gonna have to reference when we're loading the software, as well as this adapter cable right here. So this adapter cable that goes on the chip, it is notched to fit the chip only one way, so make sure that you get it in correctly and don't try to force it, and then plug it into your AK90 programmer. 
So here I'm going to select the EWS type I have according to the chip and it's going to show me a little diagram of the chip just to make sure that I have it correctly. So you want to confirm that before you move on. And now we can go to reading the EWS. So I press the button here and then I get this code and it says pin no touch. So this could be a number of things and from what I read online, it could be that the chip isn't properly connecting to the adapter here. So it's recommended that you try to press down on the adapter and then read it, but that still wasn't working for my board. So I took a look over the chip and noticed that there was some corrosion on these pins here where it's supposed to make contact. And of course I already grinded it down so you can't really see it in these clips here, but I took a little razor blade and I scratched off the corrosion very lightly because you don't want to damage the chip or the board and after I had scratched off the corrosion it made a successful attempt at reading the information from the EWS module. So once it's successfully read the EWS chip, it's gonna prompt you to save the bin file. And that's basically all the information about the security system on the chip. And it's gonna allow you to program a new key. So we saved that file and we'll be able to load it up later if we need to make more keys. But for now, we're gonna use this information to analyze the EWS. So we press the EWS analyze button and we see exactly how many keys have previously been registered. So this car has had a multiple number of keys, but we are gonna be adding a new one today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my key in the programmer right here, and you can see that I have it leaned up a certain way, and this was actually the bane of my existence. So trying to read the key like this was not successful, and it was just causing me issues. For example, when I leaned the key on its backside, I was able to read it successfully, but then when I tried writing the key and writing it to a new spot, so one that was empty, it was unsuccessful. So it actually gave me an error. So then I had to play around with it a little more and I finally came up with this position. It's the most secure one that transmits the signal. And I was also reading online that some people were having trouble programming the key to a new position. So I tried position five and then I also tried position three, which may have caused me some issues later on, but didn't affect how the car started or how the remote worked. So now it looks like we've been successful. We got the right key okay message and we're gonna go ahead and try to test our key out right now. Nope. Still doesn't want to work. A lot of boring math later. All right. So we're gonna, I don't believe I don't believe what just happened. So we're gonna try it again. But I just cleared the codes on the EWS. It was showing me as having some codes for some keys, and uh, obviously, you know, we're messing around with the keys. But now, now it works. It works. I'll do that again. I kind of, it doesn't have the intake man, the intake uh, on right now, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so now the last thing left to do is to program it. If I'm correct, I think that we have to put the key in and do that like twisty motion three times. And then you're gonna come over here and press and hold the unlock button and tap the lock button three times. I believe that's the procedure. So let's try that now. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm not gonna be able to show you guys here. And you know what, since it starts the car, when we read and see what key it is, we see it is key number five. So it thinks it's three, it thinks it's five actually. I might have double written over this key because I tried a couple of different positions for it. But uh, it does start the car, that's for sure. So, success. But now we need to try to program this. So we're gonna try this again here because it didn't work for me the last time. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. 
eventually. Now, the reason I don't think it was working before is because this key actually comes compatible with two different uh, frequencies of EWS. So you can see what the frequency of your car is by the VIN decoding, and it'll either be like 315 megahertz or 433 megahertz. So this key supports both, but not at the same time. So in order to switch between the different megahertz modes, you actually need to... Uh, press and hold both buttons and then release this one and and then press the lock or the trunk button five times fast and that'll switch the frequency mode and then I tried to do the learn procedure again and when I did it it worked So there you go. She works. And let's see. Well, I, I think that I'm sure the trunk works. Oh my God. You could, I'm sure. I hope you guys could hear that. So car locks and unlocks, which is pretty cool. The car also starts with the new key. So that's really cool. Wow, what a success this has been. I am actually sweating a little bit because this has taken a little bit of work and patience for sure, but we finally got it working 100%. This is pretty cool too. I didn't know that on the E46s, the key for the trunk actually unlocks the window portion here. So now we finally have access to this window portion, which is really cool. So you know what, with a little bit of troubleshooting, anything is possible. And at the end of the day, if you're having issues with this key programmer or the key, it, it, it might not just be the hardware. You, you might have some user error. And of course me learning this for the first time, I'm gonna have a couple of mistakes and all that. But I'm excited to have this tool in our cabinet because this is gonna allow us to program more keys for future builds, which is really cool. We'll always make sure that we have one good working key to go with every car. And of course, that's why I wanted to get rid of this one, or at least put it aside, because this remote doesn't work. So this is a good spare key, give it to the wife, or you know, hide it in the office. But this is our money key, this is the one that actually locks and unlocks the car, opens the trunk, and all we have to do now is get a BMW emblem to put on the middle here, a little sticker. And they sell the BMW emblem for this separately, so you can buy it genuine from BMW, peel off the sticker, and put it in the middle here. So I think that is our, gonna be our next step for this key, and it'll look super mint and fresh afterwards. I'm gonna put these two on the same key ring. But there you have it, guys. That was a successful key programming. So there you have it folks, a successful key programming. Like I said, I'm gonna link all the parts that I use in the description down below. The key programmer and the key were both available through Amazon Prime, so really fast shipping to my door. And I'll also put a link to the software down below so that you guys can download it. And that stuff is free of charge. Now, I also did not come up with this knowledge on my own, so I'm gonna put a link to the YouTube video of someone who really helped me understand the key programming process. I'll put that link in the description below so you can watch him and learn from how he's programming the key because he has a lot of valuable knowledge to share as well. I just wanna inspire you guys to get out there and get your keys replaced, You know, make sure that you have a good working one for your car, and I wanna spread this knowledge with you guys so you know it's not that hard to do yourself at home. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like down below or comment what you think of this process, if it's worth doing all the programming yourself or maybe just paying the locksmith to do the key and maybe you'll pay a little bit more, but you won't have to deal with all this frustration like me and troubleshooting. And uh, as usual, subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't yet. I appreciate all you guys watching and I hope you have an awesome day. We'll see you next time.